Hey guys, Matt here. This is my review of Parasite. This movie is directed by Bong Joon-ho, who previously directed Okja and Snowpiercer. And the movie stars a whole bunch of actors that I'm going to list here because I don't want to risk butchering their names. Parasite is about the Kim family. They're very lower class and they live in the slums of South Korea. When the son of this family gets a job tutoring the daughter of this wealthy family, he comes up with a clever idea. Because the wealthy family needs some additional help around the house, he tells them, oh, you need somebody to help your son? Okay, I know a girl. And he eventually gets his sister the job. And shortly thereafter, the Kim family are now working for the Park family. The Parasite is a unique film. And for me, there hasn't been a film this groundbreaking when it comes to movies since Snowpiercer. And before that, Old Boy. Not the Josh Brolin remake, but the original Korean film. Now, if you haven't seen many foreign films, they're similar in the sense that American movies just aren't made the same way. Foreign films have an aspect of both comedy and drama. It makes you happy one moment, but it has dark humor and tragedy the next. But it all flows together quite nicely and tells a nice complete story. Now, Parasite, like many movies, because it starts out with uh, main characters, the audience is conditioned to latch onto them. To say, okay, these are the characters we've introduced to first, so these are the ones we have to follow. These are the ones we have to root for. But Parasite does something interesting where you're enjoying these characters. and The movie has kind of a comedic feel to it. But once the film reaches a halfway point, the tone changes. The character traits change. The characters decide to do something that makes you change your perspective on how you view them. If you look at the movie poster of this film, <clears throat> you have the uh, patriarch of the Kim family with black bars over his eyes. Behind him, you have the matriarch of the Park family with a white bar over her eyes. It's almost as if they're trying to show you characters that have good hats, or sorry, white hats, and black hats. Good guys or bad guys. Parasite has a very interesting dynamic to it in the sense that it's a film that is going to be talked about after it's viewed. It's going to be analyzed. It's going to be broken down. It has a lot of meta uh, metaphors and symbolism within it. It's about the haves versus the have-nots. The rich and the poor. There's a lot of elements in this film that almost beat you over the head with it, but it's okay because it doesn't make you tiresome. It doesn't make you roll your eyes like, okay, we get it. They don't have anything. They have everything. Stuff like that. Because the movie does something very interesting. It flips the cliche of rich people and poor people and turns it on its head because the poor people in this scenario are very intelligent. Whereas the rich people are kind of naive. Whereas in most other movies, the poor people are displayed as, you know, dumb or uneducated. And the rich are, you know, portrayed as really high-class snobbish people. For those of you that plan on seeing Parasite, let me give you two examples of things to pay attention to while watching the movie. Because some aspects of this film aren't clear-cut. They're not exactly black and white. And the first is that when the Kims are introduced, their phones have been turned off. Therefore, they have no internet connection, so they try to mooch off of the neighbor's Wi-Fi signal. So they hold their phones up, trying to get a signal. And it's not until they're in the bathroom, above the toilet, that they get a bar, that they get a signal. There's a scene where the son and the daughter are above the toilet on their phones because they have the neighbor's Wi-Fi. Also, the depiction of windows in the film is paramount. Just like the movie Snowpiercer, which is also about the poor versus the wealthy, the poor people on the back of the train in Snowpiercer had no windows, no daylight, no connection to the outside world. In this movie, Parasite, 
it's like that too. The Kims have one set of windows in their kitchen area in their sub-basement. In that alleyway that they view, that's their world. That's what they experience. They get free fumigation early in the film, as I mentioned. They see this homeless man that comes staggering out of a bar that they pity. And then later in the film, something happens that impacts them greatly. Whereas the Park family live in this big, rich house. Their first floor is almost entirely made of windows. So something the wealthy Parks appreciate and take for granted, the Kims rely on. The formula of the story is the first thing that stands out to me that makes this film unique. The way the characters are displayed. The Kim family isn't just a family with a father, mother, son, daughter. It's like they're a team pulling off a heist in a movie like Ocean's Eleven. They work together, but you can also feel that they love each other and get along at some moments, and they bicker and fight and hate each other at other moments. But you also feel something for the Park family. Something that's neat about this movie is the film is called Parasite. And there are many interpretations and many things to look for and look out and read into in this movie. Parasite. You have the Kim family that are obvious parasites and conning this rich family. You have the rich family that's taking advantage of the lower class and things that they are accustomed to. Whereas the Kims have to work very hard for what they have. But then you have a third party that's introduced halfway in the movie that are also parasites. They're also taking advantage of characters. And I can't go too much into detail just to avoid spoilers, but there's a lot of aspects of the movie that show you who these characters are. And it's not until the movie is over, or it's not until you've rewatched it a second time that you realize, oh yeah, that helps flesh out these characters' motivations or actions. There's a lot of uh, <clears throat> metaphors, like I said, between the rich and the poor. A lot of the shots are of characters descending down uh, stairs or driveways, showing their descent from the higher up to lower class. There's a pretty memorable scene where, you know, the rich characters are admiring the storm. They think the rain is a cleanse, something that's to be appreciated. Whereas the poor folk, they don't see it the same way because it has some dire effects on the way they live. <clears throat> There's also a scene early in the movie where a character receives what he thinks is a gift. But upon another point of view, you see this gift as a burden. What he thinks is a sign of hope and prosperity is really a sign of his greed and selfishness stowing and starting inside him. Uh, there's a lot of things to take away from this movie. And I would say overall, the theme is that <clears throat> if you're trying to help yourself and your family at the expense of another family, you're going to bring about your own destruction. And that's the theme of this movie. Yeah, their intentions were good, the Kim families, but in the end, it ended up hurting people. And so, because this movie technically, and from a storytelling aspect, was really well done, but I simply don't know what to take away from it, I'm going to give Parasite a B+. Personally, when I watch a movie, I need to feel something about what I was just shown, what was just depicted, the story I was just told, whether it's happiness, sadness, joy, or dread. I need to feel something. I need to take something away from that experience. And because this movie, from the acting, from the cinematography, and from its unique storytelling, was impressive, but... I just don't know if I'm supposed to feel sad because of the outcome. I don't know if I'm supposed to feel uplifted because of the outcome. And because I just 
don't know how to feel, it doesn't get a higher grade. But that's my personal movie-going experience. All film is subjective. That's why I love movies. So, till next time, guys. See ya.